Welcome to Arshan of Let's Play Farming Simulator 2013 on Central Kansas. <laughs> All right, we got a couple things going on today. Let me just make a little statement here because I'm just trying something a little bit different. Uh, in OBS, Open Broadcast Software, the software I am using at the moment to record this particular episode, um, has a noise gate feature. Basically what it boils down to is if I stop talking for a specific period of time, my microphone will stop recording sound until I start making a certain level of sound again. So, as this is the first time I've used this, please let me know what it sounds like. Anyways, having said that, let's move on. All right, so I don't know if you guys remember, I bailed this entire field uh, with square bales. And what I discovered is, what I discovered is this trailer does not pick up these bales. Annoyed? Yes. Um, so I got this trailer and what I actually did, let me just tell you a little story. What I actually did was, uh, I believe it was Anders actually uh, correctly stated what the problem was. I actually discovered just before that uh, what the problem was. It was because I had the multiplayer version not the single player version. The single player version will allow you to auto load. So what I did, um, as you can see right here, uh, I, I just switched out the versions. It's exactly the same price. It's the only difference is one's a a uh, multiplayer version, one's a single player version. So what I did is I uh, don't know why I decided to bring the bobcat out here and collect all of the bales manually. Um, and there were 60 bales, so took a little bit of time. But I was like, yeah, whatever. I don't do this very often, so. I didn't want to show it all on camera, but I did want to show at least a couple. And the thing I realized is these bales, I don't know if it's the uh, attachment I have or something, but with the Bobcat, these bales are heavy or something, because watch, like I'll lift it up and it actually moves the Bobcat quite a bit. I don't know if that was some update to the physics engine or something, but you can definitely tell that uh, these bales are a little bit heavier so as you can see like as I'm lifting up it does this weird little thing right here so I don't know I'm pretty sure it's because the bales are a little too heavy for the bobcat um, that's what I think it is at least so ah well anyways I picked up I think there was like 60 bales in the end which is quite a lot um, but I was embracing my inner front loader person I guess I guess it would be like my inner northern warrior because he loves that stuff I don't mind it, but I was like, I didn't want to buy the Heath Super Chaser trailer. So I was like, well, I'll just do it this way. Because I, the reason why I didn't want to buy it was basically because I had this trailer right here, which is supposed to automatically, um, uh, supposed to automatically stack the bales for me. Um, actually, I'm going to do it and drive this guy down here. Uh, it's supposed to automatically stack the bales for me. Um, it didn't. So I was like, you know what? In order to defy the odds, I was like, I am just going to stack these manually. So that's what I did. I stacked them all manually, which is kind of funny, actually, because it's not something I normally do. So anyways, that's what happened with that. So in light of that, actually, I have the... Um, I actually have the New Holland at the, at the shop. And he's currently just... I put the... The, the baler right there uh, at the shop and re ready to sell it uh, just because I was like ah, should I sell it should I not see the problem is I bought that trailer back there and it doesn't work with these bales but I uh, did a little testing and it does work with some other bales so let me just tell you some of the other bales that works with it works with the coon baler um, Oh, those are moving. It's not just my imagination. Yeah, this is... I don't know. I couldn't pick these bales up. They wouldn't stack and stay on the trailer, so... I am... Uh, wow, they really are moving. Huh. There we go. Um... <laughs> they stuck together, so I just, uh... I just left them on the ground, and then I was gonna do what I'm doing right now, and just drive the bobcat over and pick them up. I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but apparently got stuck inside each other, so can't do much about that really. So basically, I just you know left them there, and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna leave them like that. Oh well. 
Yeah, so, like I said, I have the New Holland Baylor. He's currently just chilling out at the... Or the New Holland... I guess is it New Holland? I don't think so. Massey Ferguson? Whatever. I have the Baylor sitting in the sell point. Because I'm not sure what to do with it. If to, whether I should sell it or not, basically. So, if I go ahead and sell it, I do make some money back. But then I had... I will have to buy another Baylor of some sort. Um, not sure what Baylor to buy. Now, the silly thing is, I know. I tested to see whether the John Deere uh, 864 Baylor would work or not, and it does. Um, so that's kind of, um, that made me a little annoyed, because I was like, well, originally I was going to get the John Deere Baylor, but because I have it on the Glen Malure farm, I was like, no, I probably shouldn't. I should probably, you know, get something different. So I got something different, and it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So <laughs> that's the funny story behind that. So I was considering, I was like, well, what do I do? Do I, uh, do I get a new Baylor? Do I trade it in? I suppose I could get the Coon Baylor, which is another square Baylor. But it actually doesn't, it makes, the bales are actually smaller than the, the John Deere round baler, so go, go figure, eh? So, I was trying to figure out, I'm like, well, what can you do in that scenario? The funny thing is, that bale, automatic bale loader does work with the John Deere one, so, I don't know, it's a bit, makes me laugh a little bit. There we go, nice. Just gonna leave the bobcat over here. So as you can see, I do have $50,000, that's partially from, uh, selling the bales, and that's partially from, um, I think it was corn I sold. Anyways. So, like I said, I switched out this baler for, or this baler, I switched out the other, um, other trailer for this one. So this is the single player version. So Anders, Anders was correct, it, that was the reason for, is because I had the multiplayer version, not the single player version. So the single player version does allow you to auto stack. Uh, whereas the version I had did not, so I just cheated, I suppose, is what it really boils down to. It's just exactly the same trailer, just one's a single player, one's a multiplayer, so that's the deal. Anyways, let's. I'm going to go through a couple of the comments from the last episode. Jared says I should do a mod review of the Kenworth trucks. Uh, the K1, uh, K100s, I think they're called. Uh, he's talking about... Uh, not here. He is talking about the ones right down at the bottom here. He was saying I should do these ones, W900s. He's saying I should do a, a review of those. I don't. I tried them uh, by myself and I tested them to see if I liked them or not. They're okay. I might do a mod review because he asked for it. Craft Farms says you've got to use that one for on your tractor on the subscriber special so craft farms you're right um the one i use in my subscriber special was the single player version so like i said i just switched out this one um this one is a single player version so as you can see over here it does um it does work in the loadings function so this is what i was expecting to see before um but I, obviously i didn't see it so i was a little confused as to why i didn't see it i found out uh, what else we got here? Uh, Jake Johnson says... He says I should get the Burgol, or Burgol Cedar and, and one of the IA's articulate tractors. He, that was his suggestion. Um, it's running still. This shouldn't be running until I turn it off. That's weird. I don't know why it's been doing that. Uh, Jake says I should get one of the Burgault cedars, Brugol, I should say, cedars, and uh, use that one to seed. That's definitely a possibility. Uh, I was talking to Craft Farms the other day, and he was suggest he suggested that I get some sprayers and do a little bit of spraying. Uh, that's doable, I suppose. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. I think uh, he was talking about. So Jake is talking about this one right here, the air cedar, uh, XL. Uh, 22 meter working width, and it combined with the Burgolt, Burgo, I don't know why I keep doing that, uh, seed tank. Uh, so I would not get this one because it's only $33. I would get the appropriate one, which is somewhere else. Here, I guess? No. Here. This one right here, I guess. I believe this is the right one, at least. Model MBJ. Let's just check. Uh, well, that's, that's going to be interesting, actually. 
question is, does it work with this one, or does it work with the other one? Probably works with both, actually. I would imagine, at least. Anyways, that's what Jake's saying I should get. I, I should get. And, um, uh, Craft Farms suggested that I get these, the Anhydrous Bulk Tankers. Uh, I definitely would like to get those. That's where I want to head towards, actually. Uh, get one of, get these, actually. And, uh, there's something else I haven't downloaded yet, uh, but I would like to get as well. It is a chipper. I don't, I don't think I downloaded it. It's a tipper, basically, that has seeds on it. And it's, like, refillable. But the way it works is you have to, like, resupply the seeds. Which is kind of cool. Uh, so I was thinking about getting that as well. But I didn't, I haven't gotten it, I guess. Um, nope. I guess I haven't. Uh, but I haven't gotten it, so I was thinking about getting that. Uh, which I thought would be kind of cool. And, uh... Let's take a quick peek here. How much is that worth? Because that's worth 130,000. That's 12 meters. And that's worth 12. Uh, not quite. I probably wouldn't have enough money to get. Um, probably wouldn't have enough money to get the uh, Lura Gold Seeders just yet. Um, is this F1? Yes, it is. Um, but it's definitely something I'd like to do. Where's the first spot? I think it's over here. Oops. Uh, so that was one of theirs. That was the... Uh, that was Jake's suggestion. Do I have a lot? I just put stuff in the... I just put uh, the corn in the... Uh, in the silos for now. So hopefully it'll... Uh, hopefully. Jeez. Um, I was just going to say, hopefully it will survive. Um, I've been reading a lot of articles lately about people storing uh, seeds and whatnot. And that's one of the things people have been talking about is moisture and corn seed. So that's why I just said that out loud. <laughs> wow, that's funny. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, let's go get this guy started. I don't know why he's turning this way. Is he turning that way? I don't know. All right, um, so that's what Jake was saying. Greg says... Um, I should be able to lower the road in Giant's Editor. He's correct. I could, um, I could lower the road in Giant's Editor. That would not necessarily be a problem. It would just take a little bit of time, and a bit, it'd be a bit of a pain, uh, mainly because it would take uh, a lot of patience on my behalf. Uh, Jeffrey says auto transfer was off. That's the way. That's the reason why the trailer wasn't working. Uh, I think I touched on that already. Anders, I touched on his comment already. It was, and what else do we have here? Greg says, I looked at the Fordson recently. I did. Sam says, one of the funny thing, one of the reasons why he shied away from this particular map is because there's no traffic on the map. And he asks, is it hard to add traffic? And I say, I have no idea. Because <laughs> I really don't. Uh, but it's definitely something I could look into. So some of the comments from the previous episode. Where is the starting point here? It must be at the end. Um... Street speed? No, I want own waypoints. Oh, hmm. must be right at the start here. Anyways, yeah. So that was some of the comments from the previous episode. It's definitely something I can do. Um, uh, when Sam was asking about adding um, traffic, I think it's something. That, it's I don't think it's too difficult, but I've never done it before, so I really have no idea whether it's easy or not. I think the hardest part about it is the fact that you have to, I think you have to set up where it starts, uh, like where the traffic goes on your, on the roads and whatnot. I think you have to do that, but I'm really not sure. Did I really start the cedar all the way up here? I must have. Yeah, I guess so. Jeez. Anyways, we'll let that guy do his thing for the time being. Let's hop over to this guy right here. <sighs> Keep forgetting that. I really gotta stop hitting Control 9 all the time when I'm in that tr tractor. I don't know why, because the tractor. So I guess not many people use the uh, vehicle group switch like I do, I guess, or don't put people in uh, Group 9. So in my case, what I keep doing is I. Because I keep going to Group 9, which is this one that I'm in right now, which is the GMC, uh, which is Group 9, like I said. Uh, because I keep doing that, it, it keeps putting the. Uh, you know the handbrake on basically 
All right, so this was, this was a suggestion from Greg a while back, and it was a good suggestion. Um, so I figure I'll do this now. He was suggesting that I give my pigs a little bit of the corn. Sure, sounds like a good idea. So technically they have, uh, do they have TMI right now? I suppose they do. Let's move this guy right here. Where is it? The... He's kind of just chilling out right here. So this guy has the uh, key nine is also his handbrake, which is annoying. Let's move this guy out of the way here. Yeah, so like I said, I tried out, I'm trying out the uh, noise gate feature of OBS. So I hope it doesn't cut out my voice all the time. So let me know if it does. Um, and there's a reason why I'm trying it out. Uh, and that reason is because I know my computer is loud. Uh, well, it's not loud in real life, but it definitely sounds loud uh, when I'm listening to the audio or listening back to the audio. Uh, so because of that, I was like, well, how can I get rid of this? And there are a couple different ways you can get rid of that sound. Uh, the humming of my computer is what it boils down to. One of the ways I can get rid of it is to change the microphone out for a dynamic microphone. Or no. Yeah, dynamic microphone as opposed to a condenser microphone, which is what I have right now. Basically what that means is it wouldn't pick up all the sounds, it would only pick up my voice, but I probably would have to have the microphone a little bit closer to my my face. Right now it's kind of far away a little bit, but I guess I talk loud enough, that's not a problem, so. Alright, so I'm going to give half to this guy over here and half to the other guy. 50%, where are you? Done. That's close enough. Yeah, so that was what's one way you can do it. And the other way, you could uh, run the audio through like a Audacity, which is like a, an open source program for recording uh, sounds or music, whatever you want to call it. Whatever, anything, recording software. And then you could do what's called a noise, um, noise reduction or noise filter. But um, in both of those cases, it is a bit of extra work. Well, the microphone would not be extra work, but the Putting it through Audacity would be extra work, so it's kind of like, well, on the one hand, yes, on the other hand, not so excited about that, so. Anyways, I do like this truck for, like, doing what I'm trying to do right now. This truck works perfectly, I've decided. Um, 25,000 liters is a good size. Allows me to do some stuff like I'm doing right at this exact moment, so. It uh, really works out well for this type of runabout stuff. Alright. Now, one thing I kind of note, I kind of encountered or thought about uh, a while back. I guess it was today, maybe yesterday, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember when I thought about it. But I have something that's very similar. I have this. This is a Peterbilt 379 EX HD dump truck. So it's a similar idea as what I have right now. Uh, so it looks a bit prettier, prettier on the inside. But the actual um, dump part in the back doesn't look very nice. So it's one of the downfalls of it, I guess. All right, let's drop this off in here. So this is the conveyor belt system I set up. I'm so happy I did this. Um, I'm I'm re I'm holding back on the other conveyor belt system I alluded to before, um, just because it is a monstrosity in comparison to this. This is a nice compact. Where the other one I was looking at was just enormous. It's like uh, I, don't, I don't think I can zoom out enough for that. Let me just show you how big it would be. So where am I right now? I am right here. So, I guess I can't do it in that view. Can I do it here? Yes, perfect. So, the other so the other setup I was looking at would basically be like this whole square right here. That's how big it is. It's humongous. But it's basically like a drive-through conveyor belt system. That's kind of what it boils down to. It's really nice. I like it. But it does it is a bit uh I don't know what's the word. A bit um, too easy, I suppose, you could use. Airvair 76 would probably argue that, I imagine. Um, making it too uh, not front loadery enough. I, don't know. I got nothing. Let's check on this guy. Ah, well, that is a problem, isn't it? Where's my truck here? Oh, apparently my truck is in group 7. All right, let's go grab that that uh, service trailer there. It's a nice service trailer, um, but I think the uh, the sea trailer thing would be a little bit cooler. 
uh, because you'd have to replenish the seeds as opposed to uh, just refill them like I'm doing right now. So you have to replenish the seeds and you would have to replenish the uh, fertilizer as well, which is where the anhydrous combo comes into play as well. Oh, I should probably should have checked what I was seeding. Whoops. I think it's wheat. I don't want to do wheat. Or do I? This is a good opportunity to check. Well, let's refill. Sure, why not? Uh, let's turn that off. Turn that off. All right. What are we seeding? Ah, uh, we are doing wheat. Uh, well, I probably should have checked that first. Whoops. Ah, uh, what should we do? Canola, corn, barley. Technically, barley makes the most money here. Um, but I'm gonna do canola, I think, because we just did wheat. I think. All right, let's fold this guy up here. There we go. We only need one strip. It's not too bad. If I did this in real life, that'd be a. Uh... <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Actually, uh, speaking of seeding and whatnot, I was actually reading an interesting uh, or listening to a video watching a video, whatever you want to call it, uh, just today actually, about seeding, uh, but it was more seeding to do with soybeans specifically. And in Ontario, what they were saying in the video was that you don't have to seed that deep actually. Uh, I actually wrote some notes because I thought it was kind of interesting. So they were saying, depending on how much moisture is in the soil, you could get away with seeding soybeans in Ontario as shallow as one inch deep. Uh, so right now, for example, if, if you got a, gut, a nice little stint of time, you could do as shallow as one uh, inch deep. Uh, but as the season goes on, there's less moisture in the uh, in the soil. They were saying um, deep, uh, putting it a bit deeper would be helpful to get uh, allow it to get to the moisture level. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, actually. Um, <clears throat> and they were saying in the video that you could plant as late as you know. Up until like late May, early June, even for soybeans. I guess they apparently they are one of the more resilient um, plants in this particular province, which is cool. All right. I don't know why I decided to start this course way up here, uh, but I did. And I think I may have to redo it at some point because this is ridiculous. Well, once we get the other seed here, I probably will redo it. There we go. Soybeans this time. I really should have refilled this trailer while I was down there, but oh well. There we go. Perfect. The dually's on. Are you really going to do this? That first point's always a killer. After the first point, it's not so bad, but that first one, especially with an articulated tractor for whatever reason, it never hits it. Um, it's never on point. Always bothers me, but it's the way it goes. See? A little flickering in there. Apparently, that, apparently that's textures overlapping. It's not good. So, this is what I think I'm going to do. I have 50 grand right now. Where's my New Holland? He's just chilling out right here. So like I said, I have this baler right here. He's just chilling out for the time being. I haven't decided what to do with him yet. Um, he's there, ready to be sold. So actually, maybe if I sold that, I could replace the cedar. Hmm. Because that would be 45 plus 60. Oh, that's doable, actually. I could do that. Um, it's definitely doable. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. I think what I'll do is I'll... Anyways, <laughs> getting off topic. So what I will do is I will plant this field in canola. And... Maybe what I'll do is I'll do some... I'll plant this field as canola, we'll come back, and probably next episode we'll be able to buy a bigger cedar, I imagine. And... We'll be able to buy a bigger cedar because what I'll probably do is I'll sell that, sy that system we have right there. And then um, we will get the Burgul system set up. What I do need to test now that I think about it is whether or not that particular... Which one actually works with which? Uh, I think it's this one goes with this, and the red one goes with the other one that we have. This one. 16,000 liters. Oof, that's pricey. Anyways, <laughs> that's it for today, folks. A little bit of a short episode. Still recovering. My throat is a little bit sore still. I guess I talk too much at work or something. I don't know. 
Anyways, I'm going to stop it there for now, folks. My name is Ian Robson. This has been Farming Simulator 2013, and we're playing on Central Kansas. <laughs> I will catch you guys later.